Please welcome to the stage Beth Seidenberg and our moderator, Sarah Burt. Beth, you're a medical doctor, trained immunologist. Uh, you've been involved in the pharmaceutical industry and you've been a VC for the last 10 years? Yes. How did you make that leap from, it's, I mean, it's not a common thing to be someone with a medical background and then go into VC. What made you want to get into VC? No, well, when I started in medicine, I didn't even know what a venture capitalist was. <laughs> so, you know, I had a long way to go. But as I progressed in my career and started to develop new therapies for a lot of diseases that are now in much better shape, I ended up at Amgen, realized that I was on the board, actually the board members were still the venture capitalists, and they started to teach me about what they did, introduced me to Brooke Byers, and uh, the rest is history. And I love building companies and helping entrepreneurs. You seem like you're here in VC at a perfect time. There's a lot of interest in synthetic biology. Uh, what are you seeing? I know you deal with this every day, but what are you seeing in terms of interest from possible co-investors in the space now? Yeah, well, you know, in the biotech world, it's been a very specialized space to invest in. And there are a lot of people who are traditional biotech investors, people who come out of banking or business development, some with PhD science degrees. We're now seeing some of the tech firms investing in traditional biotech as well. Uh, I think there was an announcement a week ago with Peter Thiel, who invested in a company called Stemcentrics. And there's a tremendous opportunity to really change the way diseases are treated using technology. And so it's easier to relate to now than it was before when it seemed like a black box. You've, uh, you've said before that this is the last industry for technology disruption. What do you mean by that? It is. Um, if you look at everything else that we do in our lives, whether it's how we pay for things or where we order our goods or how we use transportation, there's been an enormous disruption of industries by technology. Healthcare is really the last biggest industry to be disrupted. We spend $3 trillion a year as a company on healthcare, yet when you go to your physician or you think about your medical care, you, you're starting to see computers, but it's still really behind the times. And so it's really a greenfield now. Why do you think, why do you think now there's such an interest in this the space of a little bit more wild science, like, uh, for instance, snipping out uh, the DNA of yeast and inserting whatever else you want to, to make anything from pharmaceutical drugs to opiates to, to I mean, uh, spider silk. Why do you think now is the time that this is uh, happening? Yeah, well, it's really about the tools. So in science and biology, it's always been about what tools do you have to understand either at a cellular level or individual molecule level what's going on. And when the human genome was uh, sequenced, we all of a sudden understood thousands of diseases that we didn't have understanding of before. Now we've taken it to the next level. We actually can edit the genome and we can take cells and insert different parts of genes that allow them to behave differently. We're doing that in areas, for example, in cancer with something called CAR T cells. So um, you're taking a T cell from a patient with cancer, engineering it with a new receptor that homes right to where that cancer is. And essentially, we're curing patients with diseases like acute, leukemic, uh, acute lymphocytic leukemia. It's uh, in my dreams as a physician to be able to have such an impact on disease. I actually wasn't sure I'd see this in my lifetime. Mm -hmm. Now I'm just imagining what else we're going to see. And that, that could actually uh, mean that we don't have to have patients go through chemotherapy and lose their hair and yes. some of these you know, almost barbaric ways we have of, of, taking, of getting rid of cancer. Yeah, I mean, the way we've treated cancer for decades is really a blunt.
be something that's 